guys and welcome back to number nine farms today we're going to be um taking our pea seeds that we have um soaked overnight in a bowl just a regular bowl and we are going to plant them now in these gutters on the side of the greenhouse here in the plant a greenhouse i have them on both sides you can see barely right there and we went kind of like from the outside in to get them inside here and we've got some um electrical uh like you know ductwork tape um to go ahead and uh, seal the ends with and i saw this um um the gutter planting the peas in the gutter on in the garden with susan i think is what it's called and i did i saw that last year but i never made to be able to plant my peas last year and every year i've always planted peas but I always planted them on Valentine's Day and I was at 7B in North Carolina. So if you hear that wind out here, it is really, really windy. So um, I just wanted to show y'all. So you just wanna go in about a one inch depth to uh, cover them. Let me show you. I don't know why I did that. It's pretty cool though, I think. Um, is planting the um, peas in the gutter. Because what I normally would do in North Carolina, it was either I would just go direct sow into the ground. And I always had it on um, the raised beds. This was back way back when, but you wanna go in one inch depth and then I would, uh, or I would plant them in cups and then I would plant them back outside. And you can do two inches apart. So I'm just gonna go in and you want it you can do both sides of the that's right um you can do both sides of the gutter and as you go can you you still can't really see right yet Ooh, that wind and there's the other one you can do two sides of the gutter that way when you go to plant it outside you can have a um whatever you're going to run them up hang um and go right in between and then plant it i mean put it up as far as what i'm trying to say here then every time when i'm doing this i get it so dirty that i can barely um find the peas by the end so but a year every year we called them may peas in north carolina um and then once because they came they, they were ready in May and you normally they don't like once it starts to get hot but here I don't know this will be the first time growing them but I know last year at the farmers market everybody had them ready around July and so um, it'll be different for me to uh, see how they do here so I kind of um I just love these. We um we we do things like uh it's pie um peas and pastry. So you just take noodles and um put with the peas. I'm gonna tell you it's, there's some good eating with these peas. Well, and sometimes I do like a pea salad. Um and then I've canned them. And now I don't know how many I'll get this year, but probably not enough to uh do a can but at least enough to have a couple good meals so but I think this is a really cool idea honestly I really do and you can just kind of if you want to you could just kind of like go down the um and then pop them in the ground or the uh, soil and and once I'm done with this I'm gonna show you the um, the rest of the plants and show you how they're doing. Whoops, run away, bee. And let's see, what else can I tell you about the the peas? Sometimes I just can't talk and do things at the same time. 
I almost forgot. I had uh, a chili um, going in the house and I needed to go, um, I have it in a crock pot, but for chili cheese fries tonight. So I wanted to make sure I got that um, turned off. So it's actually kind of late right now, but I um, did pickles all day today. We have a show on Saturday at um, the Rush Center in Green Bay and they say it's by the Lambeau Field. I don't know, I've never been there, so. Um, I'm kind of excited in one way and then I don't like to leave because I don't like having to worry about my plants. Because um, I know I've got somebody to take care of them, but you know how it is. If you have to like leave, if you, you think in some ways nobody else can do anything but you. But, um, that's not true, because they can. But it's just that anxiety for thinking that. Like, oh gosh, nobody's going to be able to take care of my plants. But, they can. And then I'm going to water these after. But the help, the soaking helps to, like, break the, basically the membrane around it, the shell, the outer coating, because it, they're hard. And I've always soaked the peas overnight um i did a in 1997 which is the same year i got the first greenhouse um i did the master gardening program through the city of suffolk and suffolk um virginia and i enjoyed it so much that um it just kind of like i went just full 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 of doing everything gardening um, I was already like putting things, you know, gardening and stuff then, but I, I guess I, I don't know if I would say I knew what I was doing or whatever. I was much more educated after going to the master gardening class, should I say. So, um, it was, Bruce saw, had saw it in the newspaper. And of course, this is 1997, the beginning of the year in, uh, Let's see, Cody was only a few months old because he's he's 24 now, but um, it was February of that year and he found it in the newspaper and he said, I found a class for you. And I said, what? And, and he said, the master gardening <laughs> class. And uh, for every week, I mean, went twice, twice a week for eight weeks. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I went to some arboretums. I went to uh, different people's um, houses where they had um, different plants. We learned how to prune. I mean, it was everything. So if you can ever, you know, find out about taking a master gardening class, that would definitely um, be beneficial to you. Cause I'm gonna tell you, I learned a lot. And these are a little close those, but it's actually kind of cool in here. Um, let's see, what else was it? But anyways, that was like one of the first years I did, I planted the peas. And at the time, I didn't know a lot about companion garden, gardening. I just kind of like um, had planted, it was a bed. Um, probably, there were some timbers. Uh, and people used to joke about joke me about the, the raised beds then and say, who does that? And this was, you know, a long time ago, but it was so beautiful. And I think back to those days, how sometimes you don't know that the days are, are the good days um, because, you, you know, there's difficulties and you're having troubles or... And then when you think back, all the troubles, you forgot about all the troubles and you remember all the good times. And, and that's kind of like how, how that was. But they say in psychology that most people will remember the negative part and not the positive part. But I really believe that we believe in the good things, the good things that we've had and how much, um, it was enjoyable and, um, those, it's like now you would say 
oh, you know, this isn't exactly the good times, but then you're going to think back years later and these are the good times. This, every day is a good time. Every day is a good time. It's just we don't realize it at the time until, you know, we're looking back on it. And I can still remember um, Dusty out there um, running around, um, helping me plant the peas. So it was just good times, good times. But I'm gonna go ahead and line all these up and then I'll bring you back. Um, my hands are kind of cold because even though it's like 60 something in here, it's still kind of cool. And believe it or not, it's like uh, 30 something out. And I, I wore a tank top today because it said it was gonna be 50. It didn't, I didn't see no 50. I don't know what they were talking about. But, um, I packed up um, all the candles so they're ready for the show this weekend. I, um, I got a lot, a bunch of earrings made. So I'm ready for the show. I've got some of my plants ready to go. Um, I got several trays already. So we'll see how, how that goes. And I've had the lights on all day because uh, it, it literally was cloudy all day. But it finally, um, the sun came out. And all winter, like, what would happen is the sun wouldn't be out. And then about time for it to get ready to set around here, um, it would peak out. And I, usually, I called it the daily tease because you would only see a little tiny bit of the sun. So, um, on my, my friends, um, Joel and Sharon are coming, um, to stay, stay with us. So I'm excited about that. They promised me they were coming and, and they are, we met them at a craft show, uh, back, oh gosh, probably about six, seven years ago, maybe maybe a little more and oh here comes the heater you probably won't be able to hear but anyways they they um we've always had a good time with them and we're looking forward to it they should be here um saturday we got a bowl here with some pea soup <laughs> i still got a lot of seeds left so i'm gonna go ahead now and push them in so I hope you can still hear with that heater. I'm glad it came on because it makes it nice and warm in here. Um, Bruce has it set so it doesn't go um, below 60 in here. And uh, we have, like I said, an alarm to, uh, if it goes off, say, say we lost power or something, um, and it starts going below a certain temperature, that 60 degrees, then that way um, we can get the generator out here to it so that we don't uh, lose our plants. Because, uh, and we have the, the little alarm thing in the bedroom. So we, we can hear it. So it makes it nice, so, you know, it makes you know, lets us know that our plants are safe. And, uh, peas, um, they don't like, you know, too high of temperature. Um, this is something else I can tell you. They like it kind of between 55 and 60 um, degrees. And like I said, what before in May, now with, they've been having temperatures like Oh boy, my thing went on low power mode. Okay, so they're all planted. Sorry about that. The phone went on to uh, low power mode. Um, so now I'm going to put a little bit more dirt back over it or soil, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm going to bring, woo, I'm going to bring that over here and I'm just going to kind of like top it off a little bit and then I'm going to water them and they will be planted and then you're going to be able to see them um come up so 
so exciting. This is uh, the stuff I love. Getting this, you know, because like last year I was like kind of sad that I didn't get to plant my peas. Um, because it's just something I've always done since 1997. So, all right. I'll bring you guys back. I'll show you a couple other, once we show you the plants too, and I'll show you some of the other things I've done today. I'd show you how I water. Okay, so I remember all that I... Bruce fixed this whole thing up for me so I could spend less time watering. I thought I'd show you see how everything was doing. Now there's a lot more peas left. Look, more than I thought. So I planted a couple right back here and three in each of those little one gallon pots. Um, I'll probably just let, just do, um, I've grown them in five gallon buckets before. The only problem I had then was I got aphids um, with them, but they still produced. So, you can see how everything is doing good. And these are the ones I just transplanted the other day. And look at this, they started blooming. So I think I might be able to get that second season for sure now, for sure, more blooms. So, and like I said, the day the lights have been on, this was the Carolina Reaper and you can see how much it grew. Just, you can see all the new growth in the top. Look at that. You can see it's always lighter in color. So, and these are all the little ones here that are left. Just, okay, got the big tie over there. And, oh, and then this paprika pepper right there, this poblano. And I'm gonna show you the ones in the house too. So and see, it's 65 degrees in here. Humidity is 57. And oh yeah, look, I got something I wanna show you too. Look, looky there. You see that? That's the orange hat and look at the little bloom. It's got a little tomato on it. It's actually got two little tomatoes on it. Um, let's see, you could see this. Oh, where is the second one I saw? Eh. I don't know. I saw two of them. Maybe it was another plant. But always, um, like with peppers, I've probably told you this before, like you wanna like cut, when they're smaller, you can cut the tops out of them. And then that way they'll start branching off and to make these like these two right here or you'll, they'll start growing up the sides too. Like this one right here. So. Okay. And they got the sage plants and some of the bok choy. And this is a little tiny death spiral. Um, see how slow growing they are. This one's too the same planted the same exact day, but you know, sometimes you get seed seeds that aren't as, um, viable and, and produce as well, I should say, but okay. So I wanted to show you this. Oh, it's already getting off. Yeah. We already had two up here. Alright, so I've been telling you that I've been making some earrings, which I always do. I have all these little earring trees. I've got most of my little tools. This is like my little work table here. And these are the earrings I've did for the last two days. They're just little 
um, earrings that I like. I sell them for five bucks. You know, I just because I like doing it. And it, well, they did. They don't go now. And then. Look. So. All right, so that was that I've been doing. Tilly that I talked about. Here I want to tell you about too. So I made this maple bourbon pear, and um, I tell you right now, mm, it is so good. So instead of making it into butter, I left it chunky and kind of like um good texture there goes again the battery dying um so i made this from the i'll show you the book this today as well i did the ketchup um oh we still have a ton of tomatoes i mean we have a whole deep freezer full of tomatoes so i'm still working on that this is the book right here and it was like um i want to say page 167 or something but definitely worth um making out of here this was the it was the maple bourbon pear i used my maple syrup and look these are the plants in here these are so like i've got a few cayenne some um the grand um the shishato and this one is um oh yeah the boot jaloka that's the um ghost pepper and this is the lepsa the italian pepperoncini and down here some more of the pepperoncinis and however you say this one again here is the eucalyptus and some of the thyme some of the rosemary they're very slow growing so now i'm going to go ahead and plant the rest of the peas in here and just in case and rosie's like interested in it I'm like hmm this was out in our um building we've had this for a couple years and over here i've got a bunch more plants and still some downstairs too so these are mostly habaneros um the apocalypse scorpion um some cilantro mostly this entire shelf here basically is habanero king of the north a few of those i did good with those last year and then i got a few sages which is kind of weird because the sage i think something that was up with the seed because if you look really close at it you see these leaves like this that is not normal so uh that may be a glyphosate issue at somewhere down the line that they uh encountered whether or their genetics isn't exactly the same so and then all down here is like lavender and eucalyptus so look all that so we've got a lot there's all the candles packed for rosie <laughs> and this here is the the treats for the boys got the money box ready look at this a little Easter up and oh. down the money trail. I almost fell down the stairs. Hippity hoppity, Easter's Trying on its on way. Got 72 planted. All right, guys, so this is the other plants. Of course, I know you can't see them good, but there's more there. And then that's the P1. Say hello. And there is where the music I play all day is. So. Right, guys well thanks for watching